Hey everyone, Jared here for XDA Developer TV, and I missed you all, but I'm back, and this time with my top five mod picks for the LG G3. And seeing as the bootloaders are still locked on most G3 variants, these should be able to get you by for a bit. Anyways, let's get to modding. <laughs> Okie dokie. First, the disclaimer. Now, XDA, the developers slash discoverers of these mods, and myself aren't responsible if you apply these mods and your phone breaks or has any issues whatsoever. That said, most appropriately and first up is the lock screen all weather effects mod posted by XDA4 member Zigzags. Now, the reason you might want to install this mod is because many G3 variants don't show every single weather effect, like sunny or cloudy days, for example. My G3 would pretty much only show me when it's raining, but after the mod, it shows the sun, clouds, and everything in between, and it'll display those effects every time you wake your device, which I think is really cool. Installation is really simple. Uh, just download the .zip file from the thread, extract it somewhere you'll remember, then using a root-compatible file explorer, copy and paste slash replace the extracted.apk file into your system slash priv dash app folder. Then delete the lgkeyguard.odex file and then simply reboot. Once it's fully rebooted, you should see the new weather effects. Um, if you don't, just make sure you have the weather effects option enabled under lock screen settings. Okay, so next up is a mod for the camera. Now there's two different threads from two different XDA members with regards to the camera. Uh, the one I used was posted by XDA senior forum member Bunchies and the other is by XDA a senior forum member Showtech 1980. This mod increases the default 1080p video recording from 30 frames per second and 30 megabits per second to 60 frames per second and 40 megabits per second and increases the 4K video recording from 30 megabits per second to 40 megabits per second as well as changes the image compression to 100 which is always a good thing. Just make sure that after you've applied the camera mod before rebooting, go back to the media underscore profiles.xml file you just replaced and change the permissions to those listed on the original thread. Otherwise, when you try to record a video, the camera app will just force close on you. Now, this next one doesn't actually require root permissions and was posted by XDA senior forum member Stefan063. So basically, if you've been power using your phone, you may have noticed that while it starts to heat up, it all also starts to slow down. Well, to fix this, we simply jump into the dialer app and type in 3845 pound star and then whatever your model number is and then another pound. Uh, so for instance, in my case, it's the D852. So I'd type in 3845 pound star 852 pound and the LG hidden service menu pops up. Now for Verizon and Sprint G3 owners, it's a little bit different, but still pretty much the same idea. Just make sure to visit the thread to find the secret service codes for your devices. And by the way, links to all the mod threads will be in the description below this video for you guys. Anyways, once you're in there, scroll down to the temperature property off, tap it and then toggle it to on. Now, I know it's weird to turn it on, but by turning it on, you're actually turning the thermal throttling off. And by doing so, your phone won't throttle the CPU when things start to heat up a tad. Next, and still sort of part of the thermal throttling mod, we want to disable thermal daemon mitigation. So while still in the hidden service menu, scroll to thermal daemon mitigation off. Tap it, and just like the temperature property, we want to tap on it and toggle it to on. So what this will do is prevent the device from lowering your max brightness setting. So for example, if you've been playing a game for a while and your device starts to heat up, by default, it'll lower the max brightness to its own predefined value, which is no fun. By turning the setting on, or off depending on how you look at it, uh, it'll prevent that from happening. But please take note, Changing these settings will not only increase battery drain, but also runs the risk of overheating your phone, which can lead to damaging the internal component. So just be careful with what you do with your phone while these settings are enabled and you should be okay. Okay, so next up is the split view for all apps mod posted by XDA senior forum member, Annoying Duck. I love that name. Um, by default, the split view feature only works with some Google and LG apps, but with this mod, your entire app list is available for split view. Now, this mod is super duper easy to apply. Uh, what what I did was go to the Play Store, then search for and download an app called Build Prop Editor by JRummy. Uh, now, once you've downloaded it, open it up and tap the search button and then type in and search for 
persist.splitwindow.support underscore all equals false and change the false value to true and then simply reboot. Once rebooted, you should have split view access to all of your apps. Uh, there's also an option on the Play Store for about $1.30 that requires root and does the build up prop edit for you. But I don't think it's necessary really seeing as how easy it is to do it yourself for free. All right, and finally that brings us to the G3 Tweaks Box Exposed Framework Module posted by XDA Senior Forum member P underscore Toddy. Um, and currently sitting at version 1.2, G3 Tweaks Box packs so many features, there's no way I could get them all in this video. Uh, the module can actually be found in the Play Store for free, but with very limited functionality. So I decided to fork out the $2 and unlock all the features. Cause hey, we don't really have any ROMs right now, so why not, right? A few of my favorite tweaks include the tinted status bar mod, which tries to match the color of the status bar to whatever app you're currently in. Um, now I say tries to match because it doesn't work for every single app, but does work for probably about 90% of the ones I have installed. And while I was at it, I also enabled link status and navigation bar colors. This way, not only the status bar changes color from app to app, but so does the navigation bar, which I think looks super cool. And for those of you that know me, you know I jump at the option to disable a safe headset volume warning, uh, but also to enable the skip track with volume key option. Oh, and I also love the knock off on nav bar option. So now I can double tap to wake the display and double tap the nav bar to sleep it too. Just awesome. But as you can see, there's several tweaks and mods categories with this module, and there are some really cool hidden gems, but I don't want to take up too much time with all that, so I'll just say that I strongly recommend you thoroughly look through all the options available. And as I mentioned before, there'll be links to all these mods in the description below this video. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to show some XDA love by tapping that like button, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our future videos. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.